And better products mean more money, something we can all use, right? Especially one couple, Anthony and Janelle Edwards, living in one of the poorest and most obese places in America. The Edwards have a plan. Thanks. This is Fayette, Mississippi, the county seat of Jefferson County, home to just over 2,000 people. This is a place of great history and also one of great poverty. And it's also one of the fattest places in America. According to federal statistics, almost half of the population of Jefferson County is obese. Not overweight, obese. Break it down. But that statistic won't be a reality for much longer if one Fayette couple has anything to say about it. Obesity is a, a big issue here. Meet Janelle Edwards. She and her husband, Anthony, are the brains, and more importantly, the heart, behind a program called Fat to Fit, based in Mississippi's fattest county. Fat to Fit is a program where we're just trying to mobilize and encourage the residents of Jefferson County to become Fat to Fit. Fat to Fit is a program where we're offering, we want to offer incentives and we weigh in, we assess, we take measurements, we walk, we've developed uh, walk groups and things of that nature. And these small baby steps are designed to make a big difference. Janelle's husband, Anthony, knows what he'd like to see happen. If we could get 10% of the population to lose or to get healthier. That would be an awesome dream if, just, if we could affect just 10%. The program is a brainchild of Janelle and Anthony, both driven for different reasons. Family is big here, and the reason Janelle actually lives in Fayette. I'm married into a great family here from Fayette, uh, Jefferson County. <laughs> I tell people this and they laugh. In my family, either you tall or you wide. So unfortunately, we got the height and we got the width. So you know, we come from a, 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 a some healthy eaters, and I, and I tell people that when you look at us, and, and it's so funny to me that when I would, I, I'm now that I know I'm morbidly obese, but whenever I go take a physical, the doctor would always say, "Man, your blood pressure is good, everything looks great," but I'm in my head, I'm healthy because the doctors say I'm not struggling with no health issues, but the scale tells me different, and the way I feel tells me different. It's a lifestyle they were both stuck in, along with just about every other person in their home county. But both Anthony and Janelle can tell you the moment they knew things had to change. Be careful, with, be careful when you let people take your picture. <laughs> we had no idea. We have been working hard that day, I never forget it. And uh, we stopped to get some water and some ice and something to eat. And um, Joe was the last person to make it back to the truck. And the guy said, hey, let me take pictures. <laughs> and he took Joe pictures. Joe smiled, and we, we didn't think nothing of it. But a couple of days later, you know, he started to get phone calls. And, and they were saying, man, you on the front page of the Clarion Ledger. At the time, we had no idea that this guy was doing a story about Jefferson County being the fattest county. And um, we just laughed it off. We didn't really, you know, think nothing of it until um, we did, uh, they did a story on us through C on CBS, Channel 12, I believe. They did a story, and, and then it hit us. It hit me that, wow. We are in a bad, we are, we, we are really in a bad situation in Jefferson County. And here it is, my brother is the, um, he's the poster boy for, for Jefferson County. It was amazing to see myself in this, in, this, in this news article. As I saw this picture, you know, I, I knew it was a problem. I'm like, man, they are considering me as the fattest guy in Jefferson County. And uh, it took a toll on me. Um, I knew then that I had to do something for myself. And what Joseph started doing was changing his life. He started moving more, eating less, eating in more healthy ways, and he's had serious results. So far, losing over 80 pounds, 
But Joseph has more big plans. My goal is I want to see a 300 pounds. <laughs> That's my goal. And uh, I just want to be healthier. And uh, be able to, I, I want to be able to at least jog a mile. <laughs> That, that's my goal, so. So how does a group of people in one of Mississippi's poorest and fattest counties try to turn things around? Lots of hard work and personal involvement. It's personal for us. We're dedicated and we're focused to actually, you know, turn this thing around. And it has to start with us. And it's an issue that we're passionate about because it's personal. Nobody can tell you what to eat. Nobody can make you exercise your body. It, it has to be personal, so, and it starts with us. There are a lot of people doing different things in the community, but it's not done collectively. You have one person doing this, one person doing that. So what we decided to do was put an organization together where we could go out and bring everybody in. Like my wife said, we're the connector be the connect, connection to the other pieces that needs to be involved with, with what we're doing. We want to establish a farmer's market here as well. We are considered a food desert. <clears throat> and that means that uh, to get affordable fresh fruits and vegetables, we have to travel at least uh, 10 plus miles. Actually, it's 20 plus miles for us. Um, and so with that, we also want to create a sustainable income with teaching our young people to, the logistics of working a business at the same time uh, showing them how to produce value-added products, how to uh, run a business, customer service, inventory, how to plant a garden, how to harvest, manufacture, all of those things. An amazing plan, really, but one that isn't going to come cheap. And in an area where the average household income tiptoes near the national poverty level, money is hard to come by. The American Beverage Association has donated uh, almost $6,000, and that was for the infrastructure, uh, the legalities of the land where we're proposing the farmer's market to get done, and we were gr very grateful for, to them for that. But everything else has just come out of pocket, out of, you know, things that we've done. Whose pockets? Uh, personal income, Fayette community, uh, you know, Janelle Edwards, Anthony Edwards, Deanna Edwards, Joe Edwards, <laughs> Rachel O'Mara. She's an Edwards too, but she's married. <laughs> uh, but just our family. Um, so how much do you think personally you guys have put into this program? If I had to take a guesstimate, I would say well over, at this point, maybe about 10000 in addition to the money, the Edwards have donated their land as well. A portion of that land will be used to house the farmer's market and a multi-purpose building. They also use two of their own acres to grow fresh fruits and vegetables for everyone in their community who wants to come out and do some picking. What we actually have in here, we have a different variety of uh, plants. We got some tomatoes, we got some uh, Potatoes. Potatoes, we got some watermelon, Watermelon. we got plenty of rolls of okra, and um, purple hood peas coming up on the other side. Last year we had cucumbers, we had squash, um, watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew, uh, red peppers, jalapeno peppers, green yeah, peppers. Purple hole peas, okra, corn. It was just, it was really massive. But because we had the mechanical issues, you know, we were just able to get this part done. So what were the mechanical issues? The tractor went down. The old soldier broke down I on mean, us. You, you can't even complain <laughs> about the tractor <laughs> because like I said, my father and my mother bought this land 30 some odd years ago. Daddy got the tractor, and we used the tractor from the time he got it up until a month ago when everything that went, went down. So let's add this up. This one family from one of the poorest places in our entire country. So, you know, this is our But this is irrigation. our irrigation system. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Has now sacrificed 
10 plus thousand dollars, a couple of acres of land, a tractor, and countless hours. Why in the world do they do it? The Bible tells us we're supposed to leave an inheritance to our children. I know a lot of people associate that with money, but it's also um, how we live, you know, and a part of it is how we, our bodies, how we keep our bodies, uh, you know, and it's health. So if, if we're not healthy to do the work, then how are we being a role model for our children? And speaking of kids, one of the events put on by the Edwards in their Fat to Fit program was a walk-a-thon and three-on-three -three basketball tournament. Kids and adults from Mississippi and further away showed up to show off. And when there's dancing, Dr. Rick is there. These three girls travel from across the country to take part in the Fat to Fit program. Two are from Michigan, one from Georgia. I talked to them a little bit about the dancing we just did. What you've done is you've worked mm -hmm. music and fun yes. into weight control. Mm -hmm. yes. right? We put it all together. Yes. To right, it could be fun. You like, I know how to make it fun with the kind of right. music and the stuff that you do with it. But if you just put it together and make it fun, have fun. And the program was a lot of fun. I danced, well, sort of. I played basketball. Ever heard of an air ball? I can actually hit it sometimes. Okay, you guys do one. I walked and learned a lot, both about the Fat to Fit program and how they're being, as Janelle says, an inspiration to the nation. We have over 400 uh, members from all across the nation that have joined the movement, and we've actually started two groups, one in Inkster, Michigan. They're here. <laughs> they draw. <laughs> <laughs> and they have been training. They did a six-week walkathon in Michigan to train for this event, to come down for the walkathon. Now they say they're gonna win, but we don't we don't know about that. And then we have a group, we have a group out of Atlanta, Georgia. So it looks like the movement is catching on. If one small poor town can make this much progress, there is no reason the rest of the state can't do the same. But there needs to be assistance. There needs to be support, something that is sparse at the moment. You know, speaking of God, I sure would like to see some of your pastors compete. I would too. Uh, between the churches and themselves. So, so would I. Maybe we can get them going. In the words of Jennifer Hudson, where you at? Where you at? <laughs> the only program that have come to Jefferson County by the program that individuals in Jefferson County have tried to start themselves. Not the million dollar grants, not the hundred thousand dollar grants. And the world needs to know that we want to do something about it, but we need help. Because we can't do it by ourselves, we need help.